Hello and welcome to another episode of Levy's Customs. Today we're going to be taking a look at the AMD R9 390X. I will say up front that this data is a few months old now. Both the editor and I have been very, very busy lately. In fact, we were supposed to have already released a review for the NVIDIA GT 1030 already, but uh, of course that's been delayed. Uh, the editor has been working on it a bit in his very rare spare time. <laughs> so I will actually be editing this video. Anyways, this particular model is the Gaming X version from MSI and has been my card since 2016 up until last year when I switched to using a gaming laptop instead. Now let's go ahead and look at some specs. It has 8GB of GDDR5 VRAM with a 512-bit bus, 2816 shader units, a GPU base clock of 1050 MHz, and a boost clock of 1080 MHz. It has two DVI ports, an HDMI port, and a display port. It supports DirectX 12, OpenGL 4.6, OpenCL 2.0, and Vulkan 1.2 APIs. It also supports Shader Model 6.3. It's rated to pull up to 275 watts through a 6-pin and 8-pin connector, but it definitely pulls more than that at peak gaming. MSI recommends a power supply that can supply at least 750 watts, I did try this when I first got this graphics card on a 630 watt power supply and it uh, would continually shut down after a few minutes of gaming because it was pulling too much power. All right, enough about specs. Let's go ahead and take a look at some benchmarks. Now, all benchmarks are done at 1080p and at 100% resolution scale. The test system is running an Intel 6600K overclocked to 4.5 GHz on all cores, and we have 16 GB of DDR4 2133 MHz memory in dual channel. First up is Fortnite on the Epic preset. The 390X got an average of 80.1 frames per second and a 1% low of 21.1 frames per second. I never really saw this game run under 60 frames per second besides at the beginning on the bus. Not sure where the large gap between the average and 1% low is coming from though. Next we have Metro Exodus on high settings and using DirectX 12 which got us an average of 79.9 frames per second and a 1% low of 59.9 frames per second. While indoors, the frames per second was always above 60, but outdoors it would drop into the 50s and high 40s. Overwatch on the Ultra preset got an average of 143.7 frames per second and a 1% low of 89.7 frames per second. This game ran really well and could be turned up as long as you don't have a high refresh monitor. Warzone uh, on high settings got an average of 86.3 frames per second and a 1% low of 50.1 frames per second. Warzone ran a lot better than I was expecting. It stayed above 70 FPS most of the time and only had occasional stuttering. CSGO on the highest settings got an average of 186 frames per second and a 1% low of 109.7 frames per second. The 390X ran this game like it was nothing, though frame rate will depend on what stage you're playing on. 
Cyberpunk 2077 version 1.23 on the medium preset and high textures got an average of 52.9 frames per second and a 1% low of 21.2 frames per second. This game is tough to run well without newer hardware, but it ran a bit better than I was expecting. Maybe those performance patches have done a little bit of improving? Next up we have Doom Eternal on the high preset with ultra textures. It got an average of 107.6 frames per second and a 1% low of 69.3 frames per second. Honestly, you could probably bump up the graphics a notch, especially the textures, as long as your target is 60 to 70 frames per second. Far Cry 5 on the high preset got an average of 84 frames per second and a 1% low of 59.9 frames per second. Another game that the 390X runs well. No problems running it and it could probably run on ultra settings as well. GTA 5 on very high settings got an average of 88.3 frames per second and a 1% low of 63.4 frames per second. The PC version of this game and the 390X came out within a few months of each other and through optimizations both hardware and software this game runs really well still. I wasn't able to run this game on these settings with these frame rates when I first got the card. Need for Speed Heat on the high preset got an average of 67.4 frames per second and a 1% low of 47.1 frames per second. Some dips here and there, mainly when there are weather effects on the screen. PUBG on the high preset got an average of 90 FPS and a 1% low of 54.8 FPS. PUBG ran well, though it did have a few dips. Red Dead Redemption 2 on one of the favorite quality presets. The 390X got an average of 45 frames per second and a 1% low of 35.4 frames per second. I was hoping to see a bit more performance from this card, like with most of the other games so far, but it is a heavier hitting title. Rainbow Six Siege on the Ultra preset got an average of 122.2 frames per second and a 1% low of 82.2 frames per second. Siege ran well, even at the highest preset. Resident Evil Village, with a mixture of medium and high settings and high 4GB textures, got an average of 95.3 frames per second and a 1% low of 66.4 frames per second. This game definitely ran a lot better than I was expecting, and it looks great. Star Wars Squadrons on the high preset got an average of 140 frames per second and a 1% low of 105.6 frames per second. Squadrons ran well, and I could have easily turned up the graphical settings. Forza Horizon 4 on the Ultra preset got an average of 
80.4 frames per second and a 1% low of 35.7 frames per second. Even at the highest settings, this game ran smoothly. Now that we've taken a look at some benchmarks uh, and performance, let's take a look at some other things. I have to say, this car did exceptionally well given the fact that it came out about six years ago. As long as you stick with 1080p, you can turn up the texture settings as high as you want thanks to that eight gigabytes of video memory. The only games that I tested that I saw got close to that eight gigabytes was Warzone, which was pretty much maxing out the video memory and then uh, Resident Evil, the village, that was uh, using over seven, seven gigabytes, I would say, uh, on a regular basis. Uh, all the other games only used about four to five gigabytes of VRAM. The two biggest issues I'd say with this card would be power consumption and heat. So in 2015, this card came out, and in 2016, uh, March, I bought this card. A few months later, AMD came out with the RX 480 8GB, and then a month after that, NVIDIA came out with the GTX 1060 6GB. Both of these cards performed slightly better than the 390X, maybe 5% difference at most. and. They used less power, especially the GTX 1060, and then in turn, they used le or they generate a lot less heat. The cherry on top was I bought my 390X that same year for a little over $400. The 480 launched at about $240, and the 1060 launched for about $250, which it's about $150 less, so uh, I kind of felt uh, kind of a little frustrated, but you know, it is what it is. During my testing of the 390X, it frequently got up to 94 degrees Celsius, which at that point it would start to bottleneck a little bit and drop below the boost clock of 1080 megahertz, sometimes down below its base clock down to around uh, 1,030 megahertz. It didn't really affect frames too much, thankfully, uh, but uh, 94 degrees is still pretty hot. Do keep in mind that I did put fresh thermal paste on this, and I did clean it out with uh, compressed air before I did any testing. Uh, I have kept this card in pretty good condition too, so this is, close as you're gonna get to <laughs> how it performed new. So while I'm editing this, I realized I forgot to talk about how much this weighs and, and about graphics card sag. So this comes in at 1,285 grams or two pounds and 13 ounces, which is pretty hefty. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of graphics card bending going on. <laughs> With, or sag I should say and it's not good over time but it's just so heavy and it's just supported by the back bracket of the case and then the PCIe slot so uh, another another uh, issue with this card. I didn't measure power consumption unfortunately but uh, I will be making an effort to put that in future videos. But all in all, the 390X is still a pretty decent 1080p performer in 2021. However, AMD did drop support for this card and other 300 series cards back in June of this year, so they won't be optimizing for any new games or future games, so this card may start to struggle as newer games come out. So, what do you guys think of the AMD R9 390X? Let me know down in the comments. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode because I am sweating like a pig out here <laughs> in this 90 plus degree weather. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.